What do these images say about society? Do they represent the art of exploring? The childlike wonder of finding something new? These low quality little pics have been the subject of much study over the years, for they say something about the community we call home. Lost media is the art of exploring. The art of tracking down something you're passionate about, to find intrigue in a subject that's seemingly mundane to the average person. A personal connection is needed to truly dig deep and find a piece of media that's hiding in the depths of the universe. We research, look around, contact, and then do it all over again the next day. Why though? Well, we don't do it for fame or fortune. We do it for the dopamine rush when something obscure gets unearthed. Anything can be an art if you look hard enough. This is mine. Anyways, let's talk about the Backyardigans. Much like the quest for lost media, it is also a show about the art of exploration. The show centers around a group of five animal neighbors, Uniqua, Pablo, Tyrone, Tasha, and Austin, who share a large backyard. They meet and go on whimsical adventures that involve magic, time travel, the supernatural, or any other fantastical elements that come to their imagination. They also become some sort of profession based on the adventure ahead, like detectives, knights, or scientists. At the end of every episode, they get a snack, because when hunger calls, Snickers satisfies. It's a show that appeals to the art of adventure, and those who pave the road for it. A tribute to the only thing in the universe more ever expanding and limitless than the universe itself, your imagination. It's this characteristic that makes it one of the most iconic shows to ever air on Nick Jr., a classic deserving of its awards, memes, and incredible legacy, and banger music. Castaways. So it's fitting that a show so dedicated to exploration would have a major relationship with lost media. You've certainly heard the controversial tale of me and my friends. There are plenty of videos covering the pilot at large and its story, but I want to cover a potentially overlooked part in the Backyardigans lore. Between me and my friends and the premiere of the actual show in 2004 exists a hidden treasure. A treasure still sought after by fans of the series, yet one that is hidden under the fame that mostly gets directed towards the original pitch. That's right, Mr. President, there's been a second pilot. One much closer to the final series, yet somehow it feels even more obscure and lost than the first. Consider this a crossover episode, because this is the tale behind the backyard again, the second pilot. To take a second look into this pilot requires us to take a step back and look at how we got here in the first place. We have to turn the clock back a couple decades. Throughout the 1980s and into today, one of the most dominant forms of entertainment was the blockbuster action film. The trend started with Star Wars in 1977, and before long movie studios and creatives everywhere saw the potential these high budget films had as money making machines. Die Hard, Terminator, Back to the Future, The Lord of the Rings, all of these now iconic franchises were created in the boom of blockbusters that came after Star Wars. But why do I bring this up in a Backyardigans video? Well, many of these franchises would go on to inspire the driving force behind the television series. I really enjoy a big adventure. I think Die Hard is one of the greatest films ever, not to mention Terminator 2. I love those big films, I wanted to bring some of that fantastical nature to young children, but to do it in a way that is safe, hopefully not scary, and not imitable except in your head. These are the words of the late, great Janice Burgess. Born in 1951 and growing up in Pittsburgh, she would graduate from Brandeis University in 1974 with a degree in art history. Afterward, she sought out various odd jobs and short gigs in television. She moved from place to place until landing behind the scenes roles at Children's Television Workshop, The Sesame Street People, working on shows such as 321 Contact and Ghost Rider. This was until the Children's Television Messiah Nickelodeon saw her potential. She was offered the job of the executive in charge of production for Nick Jr., getting the first big break of her illustrious career. Successful shows like Blue's Clues, Little Bill, and Golagola Island were all produced under Burgess. 
But working with the cast and crew of these shows made her want to transition from the production side of things to a more creative role. She would finally get this opportunity when getting promoted to Vice President of the Nick Jr. Division at the request of Brown Johnson, her manager. She suggested that she create a show of her own. Based on her experiences watching action films, she enlisted the help of children's book illustrator Dan Yaccarino and digital artist Michael Lennox to design the characters. The gang's all here, Pablo, Tasha, Tyrone, and Uniqua, a character based on Burgess herself. Except Austin. He's everyone's fifth favorite Backyardigans character. We'll get back to that in a bit. Now it was time to create a pilot to pitch to Nickelodeon. And that time would come in November 1998. This is me and my friends. Alright, let's try this again. This is me and my friends. Oh, you know what me and my friends is, huh? You don't want me to force feed you with the information where I say here comes the airplane and show you the same exact image of the cast you've seen at least 1,216 times. All you need to know is that me and my friends was live action backyardigans with full puppet suits. It was produced at Nickelodeon Studios in late 1998, and it was rejected by the network. The pilot is now considered lost media, and there's been an active search effort to find it for the past decade. And that's a whopping one paragraph worth of me and my friends information, because god forbid this is a video about the CGI pilot. For the executives at Nickelodeon, it came down between me and my friends and Dora the Explorer. They chose Dora, which fun fact also has a lost pilot that I might just cover very, very soon. So Janice and her team would have to get back to the drawing board. While the main character designs were kept, all live action elements were replaced with CGI, and the general premise of the show was changed. The Me and My Friends name was swapped to reflect this, the series would now be known as the Backyardigans. It would take a few more years to finally get this show off the ground. But work would pick back up in 2001, when another pilot was produced and pitched the next year. This pilot was produced by Nickelodeon Digital, the New York-based division of Nickelodeon Animation Studio that focuses on digital content and computer-generated graphics. That is the focus of today's adventure, so let's head out to the backyard to take a deep dive into the CGI pilot. From the footage we have available, it seems this pilot was based off the second episode of the first season in the show, The Heart of the Jungle. This can be inferred by the scenery in the background, as well as similar scenes appearing between the two episodes. Despite this, it is not the exact same episode. Look no further than the animation. Compared to the show we ended up getting, it sucks ass. Either Nick Digital threw it together extremely quickly to pitch it to the network, or they didn't have a large budget at their disposal, or at least a budget comparable to that of the final show. I lean towards the latter, as it is unlikely they had much funding available to kickstart an unproven project. It's also important to note that the final show would actually end up being animated by Nell Vanna, a Canadian production company who would go on to animate a lot of classic children's television from this time. But this isn't even the most peculiar part of this pilot, because that's exactly how I describe this test. Peculiar. It may seem like an ordinary Backyardigans episode at first, but then strange things start to appear in view. If you remember from my video on the Team Umizumi pilot, the additional cast members within the demo were an alarming difference. But the Backyardigans pilot actually has a lack of characters, compared to not only the actual show, but even me and my friends. You see, when me and my friends first went into production, four costume characters were created by Yvette Helen Studios in Brooklyn, Uniqua, Pablo, Tyrone, and Tasha. This was done for purely budgetary reasons, as it is believed that Janice initially planned five characters. An absolute bombshell of info that I will get to in a hot minute. After the pilot was rejected, Brown Johnson said she liked the characters and encouraged Janice to keep them for a new pitch. This is where we get to the most contested part, the concept art. As stated, Dan Yaccarino and Michael Lennox designed the main cast of the show. Michael's art has been online for quite a while, being this famous picture of the cast that traces back to his website. Notice the lack of Austin here as well. In fact, for the longest time, one would have assumed that four characters was the original number planned, and Austin was added later on. But things get a lot more messy when Dan Yaccarino comes into the picture. Just recently in March, Dan released his original designs for the characters on his Instagram. Let's see, we got Pablo, Uniqua, Tyrone, Tasha, and... Wow, 
What are you doing here? You weren't supposed to appear until later, you sneaky, sneaky kangaroo. Always messing up a clean timeline. Since I found this out, I needed a clearer time frame since this whole situation was confusing the hell out of me. So, I consulted my friend and member of the Me and My Friend search team, Mr. Bones, to help me out. Here's what he said in his own words. I'm not entirely sure. I would say September 1998. Dan designed the characters before the costumes were even discussed. I can find the Instagram link if you want. The updated version was probably made sometime in 2000, and that was when Janice made the document to rework the puppet show into a cartoon. It was called Me and My Friends Revisited. You can ask Sewer if he still has that. I think he lost it. I forgot. Thanks, Bones. So what this means is that Dan's artwork actually predates the production of Me and My Friends by two months, while Michael's artwork was created two years later, when Janice was revisiting and reworking the show into what it would become. But you thought it couldn't get any more peculiar? Well, too bad, bucko, because it does when you consider the CGI pitch. In all available media of the pilot, only three characters appear, Pablo, Tyrone, and Uniqua. Tasha and Austin are completely absent for reasons beyond mine or anyone else's comprehension. So to recap, we went from the five original characters being planned, then down to four in Me and My Friends and the redesign, to three in the CGI pilot, and then back to where we started with the initial five. Needless to say, they had a tough time trying to nail down the right amount of main characters in the show. I'm glad they ended up going back to the five in the end though. Can you imagine the Backyardigans without that disgusting, vile, revolting, stomach-turning, purple, people-eating marsupial named Austin? I certainly can't. The CGI pilot also has some small differences in the designs of the cast and background elements. Uniqua has visible nostrils, something seemingly left over from the Me and My Friends days. The propeller on Pablo's hat is yellow instead of red like in the final show. Every character has black eyebrows. Even the famous backyard is different, with elements on the houses being changed, as well as a bike and soccer ball being present. It's the smaller details like these that really show that this isn't your typical Backyardigans adventure, where something just feels a bit off from what we're used to. Truly, this pilot is a peculiar beast. A beast that needs to be tamed, with all its strange quirks, differing characteristics, and cheap thrills. Literally, the shading on these characters looks cheap and putrid, even by 2001 CGI standards. But looks can only get you so far in understanding the whole picture. For you see, this pilot's legendary status comes long after its purpose was served. Because when people look under the hood of some of their favorite childhood shows, we notice peculiar gems sticking out. Except it wasn't always this way for the CGI pilot. For much of its life, it lived in the shadow of an even bigger beast. It's a complicated predicament, so now it's high time we explore the loss of the legend, and why the Nick Digital demo might just be underrated. Like most pilots, the episode only served to impress the network and get them to pick up the project as a full series. There were worries going in considering the first rejection by Nick, but Janice, Brown, and their team had high hopes. This time, the Backyardigans was picked up with flying colors, and production would begin almost immediately. Unfortunately for the pilot, however, this left it in an unneeded and abandoned state. While the episode would effectively be remade as the second in the series, it's not like they could air the pitch outright due to the differing qualities. And so it would become lost media, and it mostly remains so to this very day. Only mere table scraps have appeared online over the years. The first piece of media to feature clips of the pilot was a Nick Jr. Australia promo from the early 2000s. It shows a mere second of footage of the characters doing... Super Mario 64 glitches? Seriously, why are the characters moving so unnaturally in this footage? Well, some animations were actually done using motion capture, something not present at all in the final show. This was because the results were... iffy, to say the least. Due to the differences in proportions between the humans and the anthropomorphic animals, the animations came off as very floaty, while Janice wanted more precise movement. And so motion capture was scrapped, with only dancing references being used as a guideline instead of direct movement. Womp womp. That is the only official release that we know of showing the pilot in action, but various creative types who worked on it have released demo reels which also feature short clips. A demo reel is a short video which goes over the work of a certain person, usually to show what they have done and what they are capable of. 
Lila Warren, an animator, has a small clip of the pitch within her reel. While other small pieces of footage have been identified in the reels of other unknown crew members. There's of course plenty of images available as well, including an early logo for the show, shots of the cast in the jungle that aren't in any available footage, and most importantly, Pablo in a pool, selling his bathwater to the world. This is all we have from the episode. Even trivial things such as the runtime and plot aren't completely clear. Look, there's a good reason why this is also a second chance crossover episode. The second Backyardigans pilot just hasn't attracted the attention that the Me and My Friends search has had over the years. Being much closer to the actual show and concept makes it so that this pilot seems a lot more bland and a lot less intriguing to the average lost media onlooker. If you were to squint your eyes a bit, you could easily confuse this for an ordinary Backyardigans episode. It goes to show that this pilot is deserving of a second look, a second chance at life. In fact, I'm going to make quite the bold claim and say that Me and My Friends is overrated. Not saying that it isn't deserving of a major search effort, because I do want to see it just as bad as anyone else. But think about it for a minute. There are plenty of other Nickelodeon and Nick Jr. shows out there that are conceptually different in the pilot stage. The Umizoomies became Team Umizoomi, Johnny Quasar became Jimmy Neutron, and Spongeboy Ahoy became Spongebob Squarepants. I'm a firm believer that all lost media is created equal, with liberty and justice for all. Yeehaw! Feel free to put that one in the lost media constitution. In short, despite standing in the shadow of its bigger, more infamous brother, the 2002 CGI Backyardigans pilot still deserves recognition. Without it, one of the most fantastical and iconic Nick Jr. shows would simply be a thought, an echo of the past. Me and my friends may have been the base hit, but the second pilot was the home run, the spark that started the whole series. The pilot in itself shows us how one grand adventure can be hiding in the shadow of another, and that's why it's deserving of a second chance. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to get a snack as future lost media adventures await in our little backyard. This has been Bray Bray. Thanks for watching, like, sub, and remember that Buff Yoshi is forever supreme. around here to get some apple juice.